government extends birth and death registration period. COVID-19 recoveries reach almost 60%. Good evening, I'm Cynthia Arthur. You're watching News on 2. Registration of births and death can now be made within 90 days after the Movement Control Order MCO period ends. In his daily briefing today, Senior Minister of Security Dato Sri Ismail Sabriyako said the Home Ministry in making the decision had also agreed to waive any late registration penalty. Currently, registration of births and deaths have to be made within 60 days at the nearest National Registration Department, NRD. Pihak Kementerian Dalam Negeri telah pun membuat keputusan untuk melanjutkan tempoh pendaftaran selama 90 hari selepas tempoh PKP ditamatkan. The senior minister also said that those who needed to replace their lost my cards can do so by getting an appointment with their respective NRD branches. However, it is only allowed for those with emergency or urgent cases. Kita bersetuju supaya mereka boleh menghubungi pejabat pendaftaran negara di daerah masing-masing untuk menggantikan kad kemenalan itu, iaitu dengan cara berjumpa dengan pegawai uh, pendaftaran negara melalui temu janji dan sebagainya. Jadi mereka boleh buat appointment kalau ada timbul kes kecemasan. Yang lain-lain tidak perlu bimbang. Kalau tidak ada kes keperluan segera untuk menukar kad penalan masing-masing, boleh tunggu 90 dalam masa tempoh 90 hari selepas PKP ditamatkan. On another note, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri said automated teller machines, ATM, will no longer be open for 24 hours. He said this was necessary as many people were still going out late at night using the excuse that they wanted to withdraw money from 24-hour ATMs. Apabila mesin ATM beroperasi, maka ramai yang memberikan alasan untuk mengeluarkan wang kerana mesin ATM beroperasi 24 jam jadi ramai yang keluar lebih daripada waktu yang ditetapkan sehingga tengah malam pun masih ada yang keluar kononnya ada emergency untuk mengeluarkan wang dan sebagainya dan hari ini mesyuarat telah membuat keputusan bahawa operasi mesin ATM adalah dihadkan daripada pukul 8 pagi sehingga pukul 8 malam sahaja. Dato Sri Ismail said People's Representative or Wakil Rakyat carrying out duties in their respective areas during the MCO are subjected to the Standard Operating Procedure SOP set by the National Security Council. Wakil Rakyat Tugas mereka adalah untuk menjaga kepentingan rakyat di kawasan masing-masing. Mereka dibenarkan tetapi masih tertaluk kepada SOP-SOP. Tidak boleh mengadakan perjumpaan besar-besaran. Program penyerahan bantuan secara besar-besaran tidak dibenarkan. Jamuan besar-besaran tidak dibenarkan. Untuk keluar pun tidak perlu rombongan kereta yang banyak dan sebagainya. Cuma cukup hanya Dua atau tiga orang saja mengikuti rombongan mereka untuk membahagikan makanan dan sebagainya ataupun bantuan-bantuan uh, lain dan sebagainya. Tetapi seperti yang kita telah tetapkan bahawa adalah sebaik-baiknya menggunakan frontliners yang kita tetapkan di kawasan masing-masing iaitu rela APM dan sebagainya. Dato Sri Ismail Sabri also noted today that the government's move to quarantine all returning Malaysians from overseas was the right decision as 17 of them had tested positive for COVID-19. He said the move which was unpopular when announced during phase 2 of the MCO from the 1st to 14th of April is now a lifesaver as many other countries did not adopt the same policy which resulted in catastrophic results. 
Commenting further on the matter, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri said during their daily ministerial briefings a few days ago with Health Director General Dato Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah, they were told that the trend of positive cases was receding. Kita memang melihat bahawa di setengah-setengah negara, rakyat mereka yang pulang dari luar negara tidak di quarantine, membuat safe quarantine dan sebagainya, akhirnya menyebabkan berlaku uh, kenaikan mendadak kes positif COVID-19. Kita faham ramai yang agak kurang senang dengan quarantine wajib yang kita perkenalkan ini. Namun, daripada laporan yang kita terima daripada Kementerian Kesihatan, kita dapati terdapat 17 kes positif COVID-19 di kalangan rakyat kita yang pulang daripada luar negara. Cuba kita bayangkan kalau kita bebaskan mereka untuk pulang ke rumah Malaysia has recorded another 84 new COVID-19 cases, which brings its total to 5,389. Health Director General Dr. Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah today said there have also been 95 recoveries reported in the last 24 hours. The latest data also included one new death, raising the total number of COVID-19 fatalities from the outbreak to 89 or 1.65% of the total case detected as of today. Dr. Dr. Nohisham also said that the total number of patients who have made a full recovery from COVID-19 now stands at 3,197. Kes yang telah pulih dan dibenarkan discharge pada hari ini. Ini menjadikan jumlah cumulative kes yang telah pulih sepenuhnya daripada jangkitan COVID-19 dan telah discharge pada ward adalah sebanyak 3,100 97 kes iaitu bersamaan dengan 59.3% daripada jumlah keseluruhan kes. Duka cita dimaklumkan bahawa terdapat pertambahan satu kes kematian berkaitan dengan COVID-19. Justru jumlah cumulative kes kematian COVID-19 di Malaysia adalah sebanyak 89 kes iaitu bersamaan dengan 1.65% daripada jumlah keseluruhan kes. Up to now, he said there are 2,103 active COVID-19 cases in the country, where 46 cases are being treated in the intensive care unit ICU. From that amount, 26 cases require the use of ventilators. Dr. Dr. Noor Hisham also said that another COVID-19 cluster was discovered in the Kuala Lumpur International Airport. He said the cluster consists of 43 students who returned from Indonesia on the 16th of April. Sebuah kluster baru telah dikesan di pintu masuk antarabangsa iaitu di mana kes positif dikesan di kalangan rakyat Malaysia yang pulang daripada Indonesia melalui lampakan terbang Kuala Lumpur pada 16 April 2020. Kluster ini ter terdiri daripada 43 orang pelajar yang pulang dari Temboro iaitu salah satu tempat yang telah diistiharkan sebagai zon merah di daerah Magetan, Indonesia. Dr. Dr. Noor Hisham said 34 of the students were quarantined in Malacca and 9 were quarantined in Kuala Lumpur. The Malaysian Embassy Malawakil in Lima, Peru has sent back 26 Malaysians who were stranded in Peru and Bolivia yesterday. Wisma Putra in his official Facebook page said all of them returned on special Amazonas flight chartered by the Malaysian Embassy in Lima, specially rented by Lima Malawakil flying through Sao Paulo, Brazil. In a statement released, Wisma Putra thanked everyone who helps in the mission, especially Brasilia Malawakil and the government of Peru, Bolivia and Brazil. According to Wisma Putra, the aircraft which departed from La Paz, Bolivia and later stopped in Lima, Peru, also carried passengers of 11 other countries, comprising 22 from Japan, 12 from Thailand, 12 from Brazil, 3 from China, 3 from Sweden, 3 from Australia, 2 from South Korea, 1 from Finland, 1 from Chile, 1 from Italy, and 1 Peruvian with permanent residency in Japan. 
In an earlier posting on Facebook, Wisma Putra also said 179 Malaysians who were stranded overseas, comprising 82 in Colombo, Sri Lanka, and 97 in Chennai, India, were brought home by a Malindo Air aircraft yesterday. Today, urge those who are not under essential services category to avoid traveling during the rush hour period to avoid traffic congestions. Bukit Aman Traffic Investigation and Enforcement Department Director DCP Dato Azizman Alias said the recent loosening of the Movement Control Order MCO on certain economic sectors in stages has been a marked increase in vehicles on the road. Elaborating further on the matter, Dato Azizman said the congestion occur in the morning from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., sometimes even up to 12 p.m., while the evening is also similar from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. and even up to 9 p.m. Although most of these individuals on the roads during the rush hour period are in compliance with existing regulation, including only one person per vehicle, Dato Azizman said they were mostly travelling for non-essential reasons. He added that his department has since identified a number of roadblock locations that can potentially become congested, including six in Kuala Lumpur, five in Selangor and four in Malacca. Several steps have been taken to prevent or elevate congestions at roadblocks, including opening a special lane for essential services and frontliners and deploying drone teams to monitor traffic conditions, among others. Separately, on the subject of accident rates during the ongoing MCO period, now in its third phase, Dato Azizman said there has been a considerable drop since the order began on 18th of March. A total of 95 people have been arrested for violating the Movement Control Order MCO on Saturday. Johor Police Chief Dato Ayub Khan Maidin Piche said this brings the total number of people who have been arrested to 2,340 people since the MCO started on the 18th of March. In a statement released today, Dato Ayub Khan said the cases are being investigated under Section 186 of the Penal Code for obstructing a public servant from discharging duties, which provides for imprisonment of up to two years or a maximum fine of 10,000 ringgit or both if found guilty. He also said that those arrested will also face charges under Section 22, Subsection B of the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases, 1998, and Rule 3 of the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases, PCID, Measures Within Infected Local Areas Regulations, 2020. The detainees were also being investigated under Section 270 of the Penal Code for conducting malignant act likely to spread infection of disease dangerous to life and Rule 11 of the PCID measures within infected local areas regulations 2020. The Johor Police Chief further expressed hope that the public would be cooperative and remain at home to ensure the spread of the virus can be curbed. For further information, the public can contact the Johor Police at 07-2212-999 or any nearby police station. The Johor State Health Department has conducted a total of 11,726 COVID-19 screening tests in five red zone districts as of yesterday. Johor State Exco R. Vidya Nathan said this involves the districts of Johor Baru, Batu Pahat, Kloang, Muar and Kulai. 
R. Vidyanathan said of the tests conducted, 558 of them tested positive, where 326 have recovered with 11 death cases. Meanwhile, he said that about 920 public disinfection operations had been conducted in 391 government buildings, 100 houses of worship, 201 public locations, and 228 other premises. He added that the government is imposing stricter regulations on immigration applications, especially those traveling from Singapore. He said those with working permit and RT-PCR negative COVID-19 swab test verification letter are allowed to return home. They are also provided with health warning cards, home assessment tools, Section 15 instruction notice, as well as the D13 rapid test kit. For those who are not working but holding long-term Singaporean passes, R. Vidyanathan said they will be sent to health screening centres in Marsa, Johor Bahru for further action. Perak Education, Human Capital, Non-Governmental Organizations, NGOs and Civil Society Committee Chairman Razman Zakaria today made a public apology for his involvement in a gathering as shown in a photo that went viral on social media. Yesterday, the photo of Razman, who is Gunung Smangol Assemblyman and other individuals together with a Deputy Minister at a fest held at a Ma'ar Tafiz in Langong was circulated on social media. Media platforms. Their actions were criticized by netizens for violating the movement control order enforced by the government to curb the spread of the deadly COVID-19 virus. Razman in a Facebook posting said, while discharging his responsibilities by going down to the ground to look at people's needs, he had always observed the standard operating procedures. He said he is on the move every day to help the frontliners and also to look at any shortages of equipment they might be facing, particularly the healthcare workers. He also said if they did not go down to the field, they would not know if there are any urgent need for mobile toilets for those conducting roadblocks, for example. Water supply in seven regions which has been disrupted since last Friday following the pollution of raw water source in Sungai Selangor has been fully restored today. Air Selangor Sendrian Burhad, Air Selangor Corporate Communications Head Abdul Halim Matsom said the company appreciated the cooperation the consumers gave to its staff during the restoration works. In a statement released today, Abdul Halim reminded the people to use water wisely during the movement control order period. Last Friday, seven regions experienced disruption in water supply, namely Hulu Selangor, Kuala Selangor, Kuala Lumpur, Gombak, Petaling, Klang, Shah Alam and Kuala Langat. The Air Selangor Corporate Communications added that consumers are urged to download the smartphone application Air Selangor on Google Play or Apps Store to get information on water supply. They can also refer to Air Selangor's Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts or its website www.airselangor.com. That concludes news on two. In our top story, government extends birth and death registration period. Join us for updates at noon at 12.30 tomorrow. Don't forget to wash your hands regularly, practice social distancing, and most of all, let's adhere to the movement control order and just stay at home. I'm Cynthia Arthur. Thank you for watching.